So the biggest development over the last 12 months is probably the fact that we start to actually deploy NFV and SDN architectures and networks in telecommunication networks. Unlike a year ago or longer, we were actually talking, conceptualizing these ideas, while we are now going into a stage of deployment. Um, those deployments uh, create benefits and we all as an industry go through learning experiences um, as a vendor as well as, as, a, as an end customer and that is really, really helpful. We also see other developments, of course. We see that uh, there is the need for ever-increasing capacity and we see an increase of capacity in the typical traditional 30 to 50 percent range year over year that needs to be met and there are different ways how it's being met and uh, you know you can run your network order and clearly deploy more capacity but uh, essential to those changes is that we have and see the need for better control and better control architectures. Uh, last but not least we see the emergence and, and, and the need for automation, for simplification of networks. With the increase of demand, with the deployment of more network elements and functions, and also the deployment of functions require really the need for a much better software and software platform to automate, also to get efficiencies harvested in networks. So we have introduced uh, quite a bit of capabilities and solutions uh, just recently. So we were focusing on solving some of the hardest problems around automation, efficiency increase um, in, in networks, but also focusing, we were focusing on creating a lot more intelligence in networks. So let me just start with the automation pieces. So we have introduced um, a new way how Junos can help automate networks and create a much better way of programmability in networks. With this, basically, we can uh, help the network to create and harvest uh, the productivity it requires in telecom and other networks. In essence, uh, the focus on automation is, is one of the big drives of SDN and NFV capabilities. Um, and, and we are really for focusing on, on those. The next uh, big item is efficiency. So we were introducing and focusing on SDN WAN controllers that allow you to uh, optimize networks in, in, in a very, very effective way so that you can basically shift the workloads and map them ideally in the available infrastructure. That allows on one end, of course, uh, create higher efficiency. On the other end, uh, also to run networks a lot more controlled and predictable. Last but not least, we focus on generating a lot more intelligent networks. Uh, intelligent networks uh, have a wide meaning. Of course, uh, you, as, a, as an end, for end customers, you need to create a much higher value uh, by customizing end services, by creating maybe new services with new revenue streams. So we have our Contrail platform providing service chaining as an example. That, that in combination uh, with a network and data center convergence and end-to-end -end structure, you generate uh, a new service, service offering, uh, and that is, of course, uh, a, a in very high demand for us. In addition, we were looking at the different ways on con of convergence of networks. Uh, one of those is, of course, packet optical packet transport. We are working with uh, partners among those, uh, Adva, Corian, but also others, to provide a real converged end-to-end -end networks um, that uh, in, in return, of course, generates efficiency, productivity, and, and a much higher level of control end-to-end, -end, and not just in one or a single domain. So in the next 12 to 18 months, we see the need for high IQ networks um, emerging and expanding. Uh, and of course, uh, I believe and we believe that uh, cloud builders uh, will need uh, a lot more uh, capacity uh, and controlled equipment. 
uh, intelligent networks only work in an open and standardized environment and ecosystem. So in the next 12 to 18 months we see the emergence of those ecosystems that create uh, the level of automation that end customers typically require. Automation will be the big theme uh, as, as when you look at the economics of networks and when networks and how networks grow, automation will uh, allow customers to benefit, uh, create the biggest uh, benefits. Um, the, the somewhat the human factor gets eliminated, but a lot more than that, you can create and return uh, a much higher level of resiliency, availability, and new service uh, services that in return generate uh, much uh, higher and potentially much higher uh, revenues. Um, on the other side, we will see in the next 12 eight to 18 months um, the continuous uh, demand for capacity. Um, data centers, cloud, all of those uh, disaggregation of functions need to be switched, routed or transported. That will continue, so we will continue to see those, those increases in demand. And for that, uh, the need for ever higher capacity uh, and, and better control architectures. There are a lot of questions that need to be answered around network automation and SDN and NFV, and I'm looking forward to see those questions being discussed, addressed, and answered at, uh, at the conference. I also believe that we need to touch on some very specific aspects around cloud building and routing and convergence. Here especially, we would like to discuss and see discussed uh, packet optical emergence, packet transport, and how the ecosystem addresses those very uh, typical uh, networking questions. But on top of it, of course, as I mentioned before, network automation uh, is, is a key aspect and there are many avenues uh, to address those. And I'm looking forward to seeing those addressed uh, with vendors by vendors, telcos, customers, cloud builders in specific. The MEF will play a very important role in defining uh, the, the service automation as well as the ecosystem uh, of NFV and SDN. Uh, NFV and SDN will simply not be complete when MEF doesn't play its part.